Good evening, friends, and welcome to another edition of Crime Time with Duty Ron and Ed Wallace. We are retired New York City police detectives and 9-11 World Trade Center first responders. If you like all things true crime related from the police detective's perspective, you're in the right place. Hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell so you get all things Duty Ron and this guy, my partner right here, Ed Wallace, when we go live or upload another video. Hey, tonight we got a real treat for you. We got Dr. G Explains. We have his audience joining us live as well. So welcome to all the live chatters from Dr. G Explains coming on in from his side on StreamYard. Ed and I welcome you guys and, and we thank you for being here. Um, we are going to discuss the Madeline Soto case, uh, body language, the analysis of mom, Jennifer Soto. We did uh, an ex extensive um statement analysis with our great friend bob schaefer last night and back-to-back -back shows we're going to talk about uh jennifer soto and i want to say this right out of the gate guys we guys and girls we all have our opinions on this thing and everybody's got one but the bottom line is is it's up to the investigators to come up with their innocence or guilt and at this point just by looking at how they gave these interviews it gives us a baseline of what the investigators have to look at but the science and the evidence as we always say ed is what we need to go by and by the investigators being silent right now we just are now speculating and spitballing and everybody's you know giving their theories and thoughts but if you want express your thoughts and your theories and your opinions but do it respectfully if you don't agree with what myself or ed wallace is saying or one of our esteemed guests here we're gonna have dr g in a moment just do it respectfully that's all we ask ed how you doing tonight and what's your thoughts on this buckle up uh broadcast we got scheduled yeah here? I, I got my seatbelt on i'm ready for the roller coaster okay um <laughs> Should be yeah fun. i'm very excited i'm very excited you know um my background everybody knows my background is forensics and crime scene investigation and death investigations um, so I'm, I'm waiting with bated breath for the autopsy results uh, to come out on this so that I can get a little more specificity of the cause and manner of death and um, so forth. Uh, yesterday, we had a different forensic discipline on, and now today we're going to have a third forensic discipline on this case um, to educate us on um, what uh, uh, our good friend Dr. G sees in these interviews. So I'm Absolutely. very excited. Yeah, it's it's an it's going to be an exciting uh, hour, and I hope you guys can hang out with us. We're going to be taking live questions hashtag Duty Ron hashtag Ed and hashtag Doctor G for the questions. We'll we'll hold that towards the latter part of the show. So in the last fifteen minutes, I got a timer over here. We'll play uh we'll we'll play Q and A with the audience, and we'll 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 answer your questions as best as we can. But for now, let's listen to the latest. This is good information as it pertains to. Uh, the mom, Jennifer Soto, and the case. In the death of 13-year-old Madeline Soto, why prosecutors are now calling for an investigation into this local sheriff, and how the story Madeline's mother provided law enforcement doesn't line up with what investigators know. We spoke one-on-one -on -one with Jennifer Soto last Tuesday. Good afternoon. I'm Darlene Jones. And I'm Greg Wormuth. At that point, her daughter Madeline had been missing for one day. She told us that Stefan Stearns, her boyfriend, and now the prime suspect in Madeline's death, had taken the teenager to school. She said the last conversation she had with the 13-year-old was the night before. But this report we got a hold of today shows she told deputies she saw her daughter the morning of her disappearance. Channel 9 investigative reporter Shannon Butler has been digging into the details of this case. She joins us live in studio. And Shannon, that's not the only thing you noticed in this new report. Greg, no one has been charged in Madeline Soto's death, but we do know investigators are looking into who knew what and when. And some of that means looking at those initial interviews of the couple and the ones later on. Sources tell me the statements about the timeline are not consistent. Jennifer Soto told us last week that the last conversation she had with her daughter was about her 13th birthday party the night before Maddie disappeared. I told her good night and um, yeah, that was it. But according to documents, Sunday night was not the last time Soto saw Maddie. 
New documents show that Maddie's mom told deputies on February 26th that she saw her daughter getting dressed for school at 8 o'clock that morning and that her boyfriend then took the teen to school. But since that initial report was taken, we learned from the Orange County Sheriff that Maddie was likely dead earlier than that. Our detectives have determined that Madeline was never dropped off. Instead, we believe she was already dead at the time and that Steph was her body in the early morning hours on that day. Channel 9 has been going through statements from Stephen Stearns and Soto trying to piece together what happened in the last few hours of the little girl's life, starting with our interview of the couple. Her mom told us last week. We dropped her off at school, close to school. Um... She wanted to walk the rest of the way. But in that same interview, then said. I wasn't the one who took her to school in the morning. That was my partner. Um, yeah. Detectives believe Maddie was likely dead early Monday morning because a video timeline shows Maddie's belongings being dumped in a dumpster at 735 by Stearns. At 819, Sheriff Mina said video shows Maddie in Stearns' vehicle believed to be deceased. Since then. The case has moved to Kissimmee Police, and sources tell us that Soto has been interviewed multiple times by detectives at two agencies, and that they look closely at all the statements she's made. But officially, Kissimmee Police won't comment. So this initial report also shows that Stearns told investigators that after Maddie got out of his car, she stopped to look in that book bag before he drove away. That same book bag was found actually in the dumpster. After her death, he then said he went home for about an hour after going to the vape store and running errands. He was home that day until 2.30. Detectives say a tip showed him changing a flat tire not far from where the little girl's body was found that afternoon. All right, Shannon, it is starting to piece together. Thank you. We also spoke to suspect Stefan Stearns before he was arrested. He also all right, I'm going to stop it here because this is all about Stefan and we wanted to talk about the mom. And Ed, I wanted to go to you real quick before we bring Dr. G on. Um, those conflicting statements, mom said that she saw her daughter at eight o'clock, gave her a kiss and sent her on her way to school with her boyfriend. We know that not to be true. I want you to comment on the backpack, 735, being thrown into a dumpster. Um, these are all compelling things that Jennifer Soto is going to have to answer out to. Over to you, Ed. Well, yeah, Jennifer is definitely going to have to answer out to, you know, uh, where she was at that time in the morning. Was she even in the house? And they're going to have to vet her location. Um I know she works night. She wasn't at her daughter's uh, birthday party the, the day before. Um, so whatever happened appears to have happened between the birthday party and the morning of school. OK, um, so, you know, her placement in the in uh, where is she exactly? Uh, is she at work and is she home? What time did she get home? Did she look in on the daughter? Or did she just go and get washed up and go right to bed? And then because uh, the, the the story about the daughter, um, seeing the daughter and also what the daughter was wearing, that doesn't seem to match either. Uh, mm -hmm. There seems to be some conflict with the description. And she said, my daughter was last seen wearing. Who says that? Mm -hmm. OK. OK. Um, you normally say, oh, oh, uh, I saw her and she was wearing Crocs, shorts and a hoodie. And they, they were these colors. Um, but, you know, and then who, where is she getting all these details from that, you know, that didn't occur? These things didn't occur. So where is she getting these details from? Is, is, this, is she getting this from her boyfriend or as she says, uh, her partner? Okay. Um, you know, or sometimes refers to as a stepfather. Okay. So, you know, it's all convoluted and all over the place. And so she's, She's made several conflicting statements um, to the police and to two, at least two news reporters. Mm -hmm. and, and it doesn't bode well uh, for in a criminal investigation to have such conflicting statements uh, right. out there. And that's what we have to look at. And, and that's what we that's our lens. We look at it through the investigators lens. But listen, without further ado, we have Dr. G explains here a fan favorite of Crime Time with Duty Ron and a fan favorite of everybody. Dr. G, thank you for being here. Thanks for having me. I'm really excited to be here today. Yeah, good to see you again. You know, uh, Doc, I, as I was telling you before we went live quickly, uh, Ed Wallace and I, you know, we watch your stuff. We look to you for direction when it comes to body language because we're not body language experts. So we are detectives from the New York City Police Department. We've seen a lot. We've done a lot. We've 
Ed has processed over 2,700 crime scenes in his time, which is impressive. He's a forensic expert. I worked in the Fugitive Enforcement Division. And you, my friend, have a lot of experience when it comes to, as it pertains to this stuff. So we appreciate you taking the time out of your busy schedule to come and hang out with us. But we're also honored. We, we consider you a friend. So thank you. I, I appreciate being on here. I think you guys are great. I like watching your stuff. And so it's it's very much mutual. So thanks. Excellent. 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 You know, we may not have his profession, but, you know, before I was a crime scene investigator, you know, we both did patrol. I also did anti-crime. And so bo people's body language was I and my fellow crime scene, I'm sorry, my fellow anti-crime uh, uh, officers, we would look at people's bodies, positions, poses, and uh, yeah. the way they were standing. And we would look for certain characteristics of whether they're uh, possessing a firearm, whether they're possessing drugs on their body and so forth and bulges and things like that. And, and yeah. the way they walk, some of the mannerisms, if you, you know, if you're hold, uh, hiding a gun in, um, in your waistband or a long gun, like a shotgun in a pant leg, and you know how they would stride and walk and so forth and how they would hold a hand position in certain ways that would give us those key tells that hey maybe we should approach this individual and and see what they're up to right and, and i bet also too doc you, when you have you know people in your office patients or people that you're you know reviewing here that you, as you do online you're looking at all these different mannerisms and the way they uh, hold themselves so you did a complete review of not just the boyfriend, but you did a review and you uploaded tonight for Jennifer Soto. Um, you know, I wanted you to talk a little bit about some of your findings. And 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 again, like I said, folks in the chat, this uh, is from his point of view, his lens is going to be different than detectives who are looking to get to the truth through evidence. So I just wanted you to lay it out for the folks. And I would also say before I explain that is that as a forensic psychologist, when I do forensic reports, when I'm involved in the court system and all that, the way I approach things are different still even then. So this really was an analysis of body language. So the fact that there have been inconsistent police reports and all of that, I'm aware of those things, but that I didn't factor that in to say, well, I know all this, so I'm going to disregard all the body language. Let's just focus on how inconsistent she's being. So as far as Jennifer Soto, what I mainly discovered, at least what my what I observed was that she is a bit peculiar she's odd sure the way that she expresses herself her body was very tense very anxious as you could see on the video we watched she was bouncing her leg up and down she couldn't sit still but the way that she spoke oftentimes sounded a bit calmer she didn't seem engaged with the content of what was going on the grave just awfulness and the, the fear that you would think you would hear in her voice it, it, it didn't seem as obvious as it would for a lot of people so a lot of the conclusions i came to were that I don't think that she actually knew about the murder at the time. I don't think that she knew that Madeline was dead. And we, we can talk more about the specifics about what I observed and why I think that, but that was the conclusion I came to. I do want to be very clear. I know this is a, a, a hard pill to swallow for a lot of people because I know we all feel a lot about this. I feel a lot about this. This whole situation makes me angry. Whenever you see somebody, I don't even want to think about what she went through before she was. I mean, there, there's just so much awfulness around this situation so i know we probably all feel very intense about it but i really did see somebody maybe who was easily manipulated ma manipulated maybe she was a little bit naive there could be a variety of reasons why uh uh stefan stearns i keep i was calling kept calling him stefan stevens and i had to keep re-recording it because for some reason i can't get his name right stefan stearns he seems incredibly manipulative when i watched his video crying without tears i mean it, it didn't even it wasn't even a very compelling performance for anybody so when any of us watch that we go well this guy's obviously lying i don't think he's fooling many people but he might have been fooling jennifer soto and that says something about her ability to read people so there could have been a lot of manipulation going on some of the conflicting statements maybe are related to that maybe she got her information her data from him but from what i've gathered he was not a very convincing liar. And there were a lot of places where the body language showed what I believe to be deception and manipulation on the part of Stefan Stearns on the part of Jennifer Soto. I saw a lot of odd sort of unusual behavior, but I didn't see a lot that made me think, yeah, she knows what's going on and she's in on it. 
Yeah. Well, you know, also remember that at the time of these interviews, it was the the day after she was reported missing and the second yep. day after she was reported. So at that point in time, the police had not made an announcement that um, they believe that uh, she was dead already um, and they hadn't found the body yet. Right. So yeah. the only thing the mother knows is what her boyfriend told her. Right. And I, and I could also say emotions are running high here. Be, you know, we're all, most of us are parents who are watching this and are following this, uh, this horrible case and our emotions are running high and we want whoever's responsible, whoever is, um, has anything, any kind of hand to do. If you had prior knowledge, if you didn't, if you, um, you know, help to cover things up, we want that to come to light. And that's where the emotions run high because we're talking about an 11 year old girl when this all started in uh, March of 2022, according to the arrest affidavit, March 20th, 2022 is when those pictures were taken off of this this step monster's phone. I don't even like to call him a stepfather. This monster took these pictures dating and in that arrest warrant, we read it out uh, out loud. It was horrible to hear, but 320 of 2022 is when the first photo was probably extracted and 12, three of 2023. That's a decent amount of time. And it would put her at 11 years old. I, I, I'm, I'm telling you right now, like people are, quick to point fingers and want to put blame on this mom we need the the evidence and the science well that what that you that's can't just somebody on emotions yes but that's just what's recorded on the phone we don't know what happened prior to that date i mean because mm. this could have been going on farther far far more than we know before her 11th birthday all right so yeah. Uh, you know, we don't know. I don't know the exact time frame of this relationship. She's, I think, something somebody I heard say on the internet six years, seven years. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So, yeah. Well, Dr. G, you did a 15 minute analysis. I know we're not going to, you know, play that whole thing. Um, but if, if you, you know, I mean, I, I want to look at the chat. If you guys want us to play uh, Dr. G's analysis, we'll play it. Uh, what I wanted to do is play that Fox 35 interview that you. Um, didn't include in your video. You included yeah. just that one. Sure. That uh, Fox to 35 video is only, I think, seven minutes or nine minutes. Sure. Um, I was thinking maybe play that and maybe you could pick. Did you look at that video or did you? I, wa did you I watched that for S Stefan Stern. So yeah, I, I, I did watch that video, but I didn't analyze her on it, but I can do that. I can do it live. It doesn't matter to me. Yeah. I, I, what do you think, Ed? I think that that would be a good idea. Audience, well, what if, would you you're, if you're comfortable with that, Dr. G, yeah, that's fine. I'm totally cool with that. Yeah. All right. I like that. I like that. Roll it. It was just a thought that I had to, to get that Fox 35 interview because it gives a little different perspective because she seemed to be less shaky mm -hmm. and um, kind of more engaged with this reporter. So yeah. I'll let it play. And do you want, to tell me when to stop it, or do you want to just let the whole thing play and then we'll review it? I'll probably it. tell you to stop it a couple of times because I do like to talk close to when something happens, so I'll let you know. All right, I'll do it like this so we the, the audience can see us all and we'll uh, stop and go. All right, so here we go. This is the Fox 35 interview from Fox 35 Atlanta. Tell us what's going on with Maddie. Well, um, Monday morning, we took her to school. We dropped her off close to school across the street from a church, which is very, it's right next to the school. Um, she crossed the street um, and walked to school, what we thought walked to school. Um, my boyfriend who drove her to school walk, drove away at that point. Um, it was seen on video footage that she hung out in the parking lot of the church for a few minutes and then got up and walked towards the school but she never made it that walk from, and that was around 9 a.m. when she got up. Uh, she never made it to school after that. Um, it's right next to the school. I don't know why she didn't make it. I don't know if something happened on her walk along the way or if she got taken, but she never made it. And that um, was the last anyone seen of her or heard from her? Yes. Um, I went to pick her up after school. Um, and she What's wasn't the, there. Um, I'm sure everybody can notice he's cracking his knuckles in the background, or I don't know if you noticed that, but I, I take that as an aggressive sign. You know, some people say it's there for, to relax tension, and maybe that's true if you're sitting on your couch and you're cracking your knuckles. 
But when you're doing sitting behind somebody in an imposing way and cracking your knuckles, to me, that is aggressive, especially the way he's doing it. He's like stretching his hands out. It's it's the fact that that came up, the fact that he's flexing his hands. There's an intensity about that that is really uncomfortable, I think. And, and I, I can imagine if you were her sitting and hearing that behind you, there could be some intimidation there, really. Oh. A hundred percent. I agree. A hundred percent. When I saw that, I said, look, he's taking a power stance behind mm -hmm. her. Okay. Yep. And it's, and it's all about control and intimidation from my limited <laughs> training. Yeah. Well, that's, that's, you can, and I said this on my video about him, but his arm is kind of out, like with the more physical space we take up, that's, that's a way that we try to feel dominant. And so as he's taking this position, I mean, it's just like, and maybe this is just me. I hate it when people stand behind my shoulder, like it mm -hmm. bothers me. I just don't like that feeling. And I think most people know people don't like someone standing over their shoulder. So sitting back here, being part of it. And when you listen to her statements, she does go back and forth between we, and then saying that he did things. I think, I mean, my take on that is and i'm not just trying to find reasons why i don't think that she's involved with this but i really do think that when she says we she goes back and forth between that and referring to just things that he did i think that might just be how she talks about the, the two of them she just refers to like yeah we dropped her off i mean maybe maybe she's being literal and it's just inconsistent but uh she she when she makes statements about things that he did it's not like she catches herself and corrects herself she just talks about as we and then he did this and yeah, it, it doesn't seem she doesn't seem to be putting a lot of thought behind it. Right. And I, I again, I don't want to know where she's getting all these details of something that never happened. Well, that's what confuses me. I, I have no idea. I assume those are things he said, but the whole did somebody think they saw her on video? I don't know if law enforcement would be where she I have no idea where she's getting this stuff from. Well, I, I think that's why we have this long period of silence with law enforcement, because yeah. they are either interviewing and or interrogating her. Or yeah. she lawyered up and she's not saying anything, and then they just have to figure it out. Yeah. Uh, but but the bottom line is here, Dr. G, and 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 I gotta ask this question because so many of our chatters, our live chatters and emails, you know, I do the same thing you do. I gauge what we try to discuss based on user input. Mm -hmm. And many of the folks, the guys and girls, and predominantly women watch us. Um, most of the women said, "Why isn't this scumbag sitting next to her and trying to console her?" Like. Yeah. You know, you, when you're a cohesive team and you're a husband and wife or you're, you know, common law living together for seven years, six or seven years, whatever the number is, you would think and common sense would say, like, he would have his arm around her, consoling mm -hmm. her. And, and yep. what we see later on is her standing next to him with him with his hand on her butt and he's rubbing her like he's he's being consoled by her. She's kissing him on the head. Any thoughts on that, Doc? Yeah, if, if somebody's highly manipulative and they know how to manipulate other people, that may be how they do it. Fake emotions. Like I said, maybe she's not very good at reading people. You know, that may just be something that, that's just an assumption I'm making. But his his fakery is pretty shallow. <laughs> so if, if if he's manipulating her with that, then, yeah, you know, maybe that maybe she's known as the one that's less emotional than him. Maybe that's how he gets her to do things. I don't know. But it's it's I, I I've I've known a lot of guys that use their own emotions to manipulate people so if if that's sort of what he's known as that's probably how he gets out of times he gets in trouble that's probably how he gets away with things so this is probably a dynamic they have well before this yeah. now doc in the chat in some of our um comments i've been reading over the times that and people saying things that they don't believe she's um she's emotional enough for the situation See, and and that that's exactly what I think everybody's going to pick up from. I mean, I think I felt the same way when I first watched it is she seems oddly calm about it. I mean, she's not necessarily calm because she's shaking, but she does seem detached from it in a sense. Yeah, the way yeah. she talks about it feels detached, but she's not faking things. And that's wh no. where I really go. Well, people like, like Stefan St uh, Stearns, he was faking things like he was actively trying to fake his emotions. We didn't see we don't see her trying to fake any emotions. She doesn't try to come up with tears and can't get any. At least I don't recall her ever doing anything like that. So that's one of the things I look for when I'm really looking for someone who's trying to be deceptive. I look for them attempting to get emotions out that don't work. And I don't think she really did that. Her emotions were more inappropriate than faked. And that is not something that I typically see when people are trying to fake these sorts of things. She just seems so even keeled and uh, there's no air urgency or excitement 
to uh, uh, her, like she's not saying, come on, here's a picture of my daughter. If you've seen her, please call the police. I didn't he not once hear her mention her name. No. I did not once hear him mention her name and no urgency, no call to action. You, your flesh and blood is out there missing. Someone, as she said, picked her up or uh, uh, what did she say? Um, someone snatched her up or whatever. You, you're you're not saying here's a picture from her party here here is my daughter if you've seen her call the police none of it so let's let the rest of this play so we don't take two hours to get through this <laughs> but your thoughts on that doc yeah no I, I i agree with you that that her emotions are are far less than you would expect you would anticipate somebody would be screaming from the mountaintops like Somebody, you know, somebody needs to do. So. I mean, I, I wouldn't be able to stand being in my own skin if I was in this situation. I cannot imagine it. But that may be why he pursued her because there is some disconnect emotionally, and people like that sometimes are more vulnerable. So, I like I said, I think this may be by design on his part, rather than it, this just may sort of be how she is. Right. Yeah. All right. Let's let the let this play. So I started driving around, try, maybe thinking she took a walk. Maybe she decided to walk to my mom's office, which is pretty close to the school as well. I drove around and I didn't see anything. I drove back to the school. The school was closed. I emailed one of her teachers. They confirmed that she was absent all day. At that point is when I called 911 because I realized something was truly wrong. Have um, you heard from like any of her friends? Has she been active on any social media? She hasn't been active on social media, none of her chats, none of her games. Uh, we did contact all her friends. None of them had seen her Monday or heard from her. Um, yeah, there's no update. Uh, and I have to ask this, and I know I, I hate doing it, but is she the type that would run away? Has this happened in the past or anything? Has she ever threatened to run away? Never. She's never, ever mentioned anything like this before. And She's not the type to want to do this. Um, she did accidentally leave her phone on Monday, um, which is kind of normal for her. She's got ADHD and very forgetful. Um, so she left her phone at home, so there's no way to trace her. They tried tracing her school laptop, um, but that's off, so it's not pinging to anything. Jen, what what is your fear? I know you mentioned she's on games and stuff. Do you What's that that this is the that's the part that always gives me pause when she taught when she explains so much about why she left her phone that always feels a little icky to me and a little weird when she says she, immediately she's explaining why she doesn't have her phone on her it, it's i'm not saying that's hugely meaningful but that those are the parts of the interview that i can't explain well that just sort of gnaw at me a little bit she said she has adhd and she forgets her phone a lot it's yeah different. and it just it, it, it's it, she's so ready to explain why she didn't have her phone on her like that just bothers me a little bit, but anyway, you can, yeah, you know. it's a flag. It's definitely a flag, big time flag. Um, and and the way she was nonchalant about it, like, oh, she forgets things all the time, like kind of normalizing that. And yeah, we know any thirteen year old. And and listen, if I leave the house and, and I've done it, and driving down the street and I go, oh shit, where's my phone? Yeah. I go, I turn back and I go get my phone. So yeah, yeah. What what is what are the odds that she has ADHD? That's a good question. I haven't seen enough of her in a normal situation to have any guess on that. But if her kid has it, then genetically, that this, there's definitely a likelihood of that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now you mentioned she's on games and stuff. Do you think she could have like met somebody and tried to meet up with them? From she's open to us. She's open with us about you know if she's got a. Did you catch on to that? She's open to us. Do you think that was just her mis talk mis misspoken? That's a good question. I'm not sure. I'd have to think about that. But that's that's an interesting catch. She's open to us. I'm gonna put it back. From she's open to us. She's open with us about you know if she's, she's got a crush herself. with anyone, and she told us she had a crush on someone at school. Um, mm -hmm. um, and I looked at their messages. Nothing was weird. I looked at all of her messages, all of her deleted messages. Nothing seemed weird. It didn't seem like she was talking to anyone. Um, so I don't feel like that's the case. I feel like she may have been taken um, because this is not like her at all to just disappear and not tell us, not let us know where she's going or who she's with. Hey, Ron. Um, yeah. She said she looked at her deleted messages. Mm, 
Yeah, I, I caught that. Um, so, and she said there was nothing there, but so she knows to go and look at deleted messages and and such, uh, according to the statement. Uh, we don't know how true true it is or what, you know. But you know, what do you, what do you think about that, Ed? Mm, I'm not. I'm. I'm not sure. I'm not sure about that, but uh, you know, I guess when they took the phone, so they'll do an analysis of the phone and see when it was accessed and who accessed it and what files they went into and what date and time that all occurred. So, and the, right, yeah. my observation was that um, Stefan, Stefan, or however the hell you pronounce Stephan. his name in the background, <laughs> Stefan, he to me, he looked like after she talked about having looked through all of the comment, or all, all of the, the interactions, that he looked calmer after that. So, I think that he was a little on edge when she brought that up, and then. I, I, his body posture seems to get a little bit more relaxed because maybe he gets worried she's going to say something to somebody or mention some of the things going on at home. I love that about you, Dr. G, is you're paying attention to everybody in the frame and he's in there halfway. Yep. Uh, but yeah, he, he seems a little bit more relaxed. He does have that vape pen mm -hmm. that he is alleged to have gone and got um, that morning of Monday when he allegedly, well, which we know he didn't do. But he, his story to the, the detectives is that he went and got a, a, a new vape, whatever, vape pen or whatever. Cartridge. Yeah, he's got it right. Cartridge. He's got it right in his hand. All right, let's let the rest of this play because we're halfway through it. Yeah. What What are you getting from law enforcement? Are, I mean, are they actively searching for her? I mean, what, what happens now? I mean, especially that she doesn't have her phone with her. Um, so as far as I know, they're conducting a search around the school, behind the school. There's a Shingle Creek. There's a, a wooded path area that you could walk. Uh, it's a hiking path. They are going back there with their canine dogs. Uh, they've taken a piece of her clothing to see if they can trace her scent. Um, they... Ed, let's just stop it there because Lori, that was a great question. And she's from Dr. G's side. Um, there's a way you can go in without the software and look at what the, what text messages were deleted. It depends on what device it is, if it's an iOS or if it's Android. Android's a little easier. I have one and I could look at actually blocked messages and or some of the deleted and sent messages. If you look at the person's history, you could see some of the things that stays on the phone, that data. Anybody else have anything to put in there, Ed? No, no, I've seen it myself. Yeah, uh, I, there's a file that I can go to in my Droid and and pull up deleted information. Okay. There you go. So All when right. you say when you delete something like a text message or an email or uh, a direct message or any of those IMs and so forth, they're not really deleted. They go to a file in the phone, and then you got to if you really want to delete it, you got to go into the file and delete the file as well. But it's you never really delete anything. It's there. It's in bits and pieces. We can put it back together forensically. And, and she could just be telling a story. That could be something that she, that never happened. That she, it, like people are saying in iOS, I'm not an iPhone guy, but I know in Android you can. But some people in the chat, and I'm looking at all the chat, some on our side, some on Dr. G's side. That's why I love that you did that, Dr. G. Some of your chatters are really well-educated when it comes to you know, forensic psychology and so forth. Um, but yeah. I mean, she could just be bullshitting uh, right now, uh, for all we know. And we can't tell whether, you know, uh, what she's saying is part of the conjured up story. Um, you know, so go ahead. Doc, do you, do you, do you, would you make anything out of the fact that like, she's being asked about a question about the police searching for her um, daughter, but yet she and her boyfriend are in the house not searching? The way that she talks about it, she is sort of a low energy person. It sounds like as I think as this goes on, she basically says, yeah, we looked, we've looked at all the major places and yeah, we can't find her. I mean, it's, it's game over. <laughs> I mean, I can't fathom personally. I mean, we all handle these crises differently. I can't fathom being at home during those moments, but maybe if she came home to talk to news or whatever, I, I don't know, but I, I, I understand what you mean. Yeah. All right, let's go. Uh, uh, Ada Shaw says, uh, these detectives are hardcore. I love them. There's someone from your side, Dr. G. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. We, that's what detectives do. They have to be thorough, and we look at everything. It's not, again, like I said up front, and Doc, I saw you in the background, like, shaking your head. Yeah. When I was saying, well, there's, there's so much more to this case to come to get probable cause to make a lawful arrest. You can't just go and put handcuffs on Jennifer Soto because you have a feeling He's full of crap. You yep. just can't do that. It doesn't work that way. You have to build a case and look, they have this 
animal. I don't even like to call him animal. I like to call him a savage. They have this savage in custody, and everybody's like, where are these murder charges? Why aren't they putting the charges on him? Because they got to make sure for capital murder, you got to have your dot, you got to dot your I's and cross your T's, and all those little ducks have to be in order. If they're not in order, you know, you're going to have the stuff thrown out. So, also taking their own vehicles. I'm not sure what type of vehicles, but they're going into the woods to search for her. Um, but I don't feel like that's going to find anything right now. We've had people all day on that trail sending us photos to see if anything there looks familiar and like her personal belongings and nothing is hers. Like I would, I would feel like the mom would be like, well, they're searching and hopefully they find her. I hope that they'll get something from there. But she says the exact opposite. She said, I don't think anything will come of that. Right. And, and it's the interacting with a lot of people that have a lot of different, that come from a lot of different backgrounds with a lot of different issues. Sometimes they're people you just can't connect with that. Like there'll be people I talk to where I'm like, I just can't make sense of what you're saying to me. I can't connect with you. And this is what that feels like. It just feels like she's speaking a little bit of a different language. There's just something that doesn't quite connect with, 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 with listening to her talk about these things. Yeah. It seems detached from reality somewhat, right? Something like that. Yeah. Mm. So I'm not sure. I'm not sure where to go from here. I'm just contacting the news to get the word out, to get some help because I'm desperate. I, I'm a wreck right now. So you think that she's been taken against her will? I do think so. Yes. As a mom, you know, what is your, what's your mother's intuition telling you right now? I'm trying to hope for the best, but I'm just, I'm scared for her. I want her to be okay. I want her to be safe. I don't want, to, I don't want her to come back home. I, just, I don't want her to come back home. She said, I don't want her to come back harmed, I think, which is just as equally odd, the, the phrasing. Harmed or home? Harmed. Oh, okay. Then I, I misunderstood that. No, it's, it's, it's very, it's very easy to do with that statement there and the previous statement when, uh, yesterday when she said, um, I wasn't, you know, my partner dropped her off. I mean, you got to really listen closely because it, right. uh, I, you know, it's. I'm going to listen again. I'm going to listen again with both earpieces in. Um, and I'm going to turn the volume up. I want her to be safe. I don't want. I want her to be safe. I want safe. her to come back home. I want her to be okay. I want her to be safe. I don't want. I don't want her to come back home. I, wow. I just. Mm. I just want her back, whatever that means. Just, I just want her back. It sounded like she said, I want her to be safe. And then, then she said, I don't. Did she say whatever that means? Whatever that means. Yeah. I wanted to come uh, something. I wanted her to, to be back, whatever that means. It's a really going crazy here. I think she, I'm going to listen to it one more time and then, then yeah. we're going to just put it to bed. I, I just, I just want her back. Whatever that means. Just, I just want her back. I want her for her i want her to be okay i want her to be safe i don't want okay. i don't want her to come back harm harmed i just yeah. okay. i just want her back okay. whatever that means just i just want her back are you getting any updates from law enforcement i mean yes they're searching that small area but have they gotten any hits on any scent or and again, he didn't come over to her. She's crying or it's a bl blurry video. Yeah, we can't, can't see the tears, yeah. but yeah. she's showing emotion. She's, he hears her. He's right there. And yeah. he's just staring down at the ground with his hands on his, he's got his head, head buried in the ground. Yeah. Anything a little odd there too? Well, sure. I mean, he's just, he, I think that this is once again, a dynamic that's probably been there. He seems intimidating to me. Um, and so it, it's, it's, he, he's used to manipulating using his emotions so she'll comfort him or whatever it is. But yeah, the idea of coming to comfort her, I don't imagine it even crosses his mind. Can we play it back again, Ron? I, I, I'm trying to see if she actually had any tears. It's, it's so it's hard gonna, to tell. It's gonna hard. Yeah, it's going to be hard because it's blurry. If they were close like this, we'd yeah. be able to see it, but they actually pull away. Are you getting any updates from law enforcement? I mean, yes, we're searching red. that small area, red. but have they? Her nose, does, her nose does look red, which makes me think maybe she actually was tearing up. Like, yeah, hard to say. 
Yeah, it's a it's kind of like a Skype interview. So hers is blurry, the reporters is clear. Uh, yeah. So it's 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 a difficult call right there. Gotten any hits on any scent or anything like that? They haven't let me know anything. They haven't updated me since I spoke to them this morning. I've contacted them to get some information or to give them some leads, but I've heard nothing back. And Jen, there's no way that she just being, you know, a teenager was like, maybe had a fight with you or an argument with you and was like, you know what, I'm going to go hang out at so-and-so's house and teach her a lesson. You know, could that be a scenario? I don't believe so. We actually haven't gotten into a fight in like a few weeks or arguments or anything like that. If anything, on Sunday, she celebrated her 13th birthday with my entire family and she had the best day. She was so happy. She showed us all her gifts. Um, she was she's just a happy girl and she showed it on on sunday night when she went to bed she was so happy so you know she had the best day i just you know did anybody ask to stop no but i was writing something down when you did when you stopped which is <laughs> I, guess, okay, I guess i guess she did know did see her before she went to bed then because she is commenting on that she looked happy before she went to bed so whatever happened would have happened after that presumably if if that in fact is true, well, that's right. Yeah, if if that's if that is true, yes. Mm -hmm. and, and here's the thing too, is she's not giving times. She's just giving a story, right? right. She's not saying at midnight she went to right. bed. Um, you know, when investigators are interviewing her and getting the initial summary questioning before they had her recovered, they asked all of these questions. When was right. the last? You know, the, you start at the home and you work your way out. Yeah. So they they interviewed both of them and asked, when did you see her last? When, what time did she go to bed? So the detectives have this. Right. Um, yeah. And they That's have homicide 101. You know, you ask, when was the last time you saw her? Who was the last person to see her? Right. What was the date and time of that of that interaction? OK. Again, asking her what when was the last time you saw her? And we heard in that news report. And the reason I played that first news report before we put the great doctor on is because I wanted the audience to hear in the new release documents, which I will get and I'll review them. Um, that's some of the summary reports where they ask her, when did you see her? And she said, she saw her last in the morning. She gave her a kiss goodbye and said, goodbye eight to her around eight o'clock. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. and that, that doesn't jive because her bag wasn't put in the dumpster at seven 30 and she was seen deceased in the car at eight, eight 19 yeah. or eight something. And so. you know, you know, who's in the audience here. This could be a job for him. Timmy Acosta. Oh, Timmy polygraph. Yeah. Get the machine. Yeah, we, need the, we need the polygraph master. Hold on. Let me grab his, uh, Dr. G's going to laugh at this, but I got to put myself full screen for this. Here we are stopping the whole show for me to show off Timmy's uh, thing. In God we trust, all others we polygraph. So that's our polygraph expert right that's there. Awesome. <laughs> Pretty awesome. Timmy, good to see you, brother. And the, the reason I have Ed Wallace here with me and we've teamed up is because of Timmy Acosta. So yes. uh, special thank you. And while we're getting a little bit off the beaten path here, um, Rochelle Pranzo, Pete's wife, uh, Pete and Rochelle, she had knee surgery. She's having a little rough go and she's going through a little complication. So we're wishing you the best, Michelle. I hope you recover quickly and the pain goes away. So much love to you. She's always here. One of our great moderators, supporters, Patreon, you name it, they support us. So thank you um, for being here. And I hope you you, you get better soon. Um, let's let the rest of this play. No, there was no moment in that evening from when she got home from the party that she had her phone or had the laptop. She went straight to getting ready and went to bed. So I know she didn't have any conversations with anyone. She didn't make plans with anyone. I didn't, I didn't see any of that. That, she's that data, the, the data off that phone is going to be key. Wait off, a minute. Off the victim's phone. Where was the party? I thought that, the party was at the house. I assumed it was, but I don't know. Hold on, let's play it back. In the party that she had her phone. When she got home, home from the party, she said. She was, she's just a happy girl and... She showed it on, on Sunday night when she went to bed. She was so happy. So, you know, she had the best day. I just, Thanks. you know, there was no, there was no moment in that evening from when she got home from the party that she had her phone or had the laptop. Where the hell was the party? Does anybody know in the chat where the party was? I thought it was at the house. 
One thing you'll notice also is that uh, goofball back there, uh, uh, Stefan, he, he's not um, – nodding or shaking his head or agreeing with anything she's saying because oftentimes we automatically do that like when yeah, we hear yeah. something we agree with we, we we react and he's just sitting like a stone so party was at either the aunts or the grandmas according to the okay. chat yeah all right so that makes sense top she went straight to getting ready and went to Thank bed you, chat. so i know she didn't have any conversations with anyone she didn't make plans with anyone i didn't i didn't see any of that were you home were you home because uh, you know when she came home I, I, you know, so all of that's got to be investigated where she was because she said she was working and she couldn't attend the party. Okay. What shift was she working at, uh, at Disney? Um, right. So well, all of that has to be to grandma's house and caught the end of the party and then came home with her. I, 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 mean, I don't know. These are all, these are all questions. And, and, and again, it's up to the investigators to sort this out and, and, and figure it out. Um, yeah, but by her own words, she said she wasn't at the party because she had to work. Mm -hmm. working nights or whatever the case may be all right spent the whole sunday celebrating her 13th birthday was her 13th birthday on that sunday or that was just like the, the time you guys were celebrating that was the time we were celebrating her birthday was on thursday the 22nd okay. she just so, turned 13 but that's just so heartbreaking to be celebrating her 13th birthday and then the very next day She's that's gone. the last you you see it you've seen her for her. yeah yeah I mean, where where do you go now? Are, are you gonna go out there and and search or look or what? What is your? Are you sticking by the phone? Are you you know what are you doing? I'm staying at home, staying by the phone, hoping she just appears. Um, I know my entire family is out looking. They've all uh, spread a bunch of flyers. They've gone. I, I've had people contact me that they've gone to the international airport to spread flyers to Amtrak to Greyhound, just any way that if someone's taken her and they're trying to take her just to show her face, just to make sure, you know, she's not being taken against her will. And you mentioned ADHD. Was there anything else maybe mentally going on or that, that you knew of? Um, she does suffer from anxiety. And once upon a time she was diagnosed with autism. Uh, we had her re sword. Reevaluated. Okay. We had her reevaluated um, a few months ago, actually, and they told us no, she didn't have autism, but she did have some autistic traits. She did have ADHD, some autistic traits, but not autism. So I'm not sure where to leave with that because one. So we would obviously look to subpoena the records of her pediatrician, right? You you, you got to go and get these records as investigators to back up these claims. Um, she's making a lot of claims here, you know, once upon a time. I, I mean, I, I don't think I've ever heard a mother in the middle of an interview uh, with with the news and your daughter is somewhere out there and you say once upon a time. I, I don't know, man. Just the wording that she uses is just odd and off-putting. I don't know. And, and part of it also that, that I think lends credence, to me at least, what lends credence to the possibility that she really is – so unaware is she does seem to have a lack of self-awareness not a very nice thing to say but i think that it seems to be sort of true that i'm not sure how self-aware she is and the way that she spills out information the way that she phrases things none of it seems particularly prepared outside of talking about the phone and the adhd thing that felt a little prepared but beyond that none of it really seems prepared and to me that leads credence to the idea that she's odd and she's a little bit peculiar but she may really have no idea what's been going well she may not have known about this incident as far as other stuff in the past that's a whole different conversation mm. you know now depending on the uh, extent of the diagnosis for adhd and anxiety there might be some meds involved here sure. um so i mean we'd want that me uh, that medical history we want to see the pharmaceutical history uh and uh upon autopsy they're going to do a toxicology so they would find if she had uh, any of the metabolic products of uh, ADHD medications and anxiety medications. Yeah. I mean, I, I, hate, to, I hate to go out on a limb and call her stupid, but she's definitely acting stupid. That's for sure. I, you know what I mean? She just does not seem like um, she's, you know, too sharp. So I'm going to let the rest of this play because I forgot what the last part of this was. The doctor said she did, and one doctor saying she doesn't, and I don't know. She's just... So in the middle, I guess she, cause she does have some tendencies, but socially she's pretty great. So I'm not sure. 
And with the video that you were able to see whenever your boyfriend dropped her off, where, where was that? What, like, which video? Was that a surveillance camera? It was a surveillance camera from the church, uh, Peace Church, right next to Med uh, Hunters Creek Middle School. And do you have that video? I don't have that. Um, they didn't show me. They wouldn't show me. They, it was actually, they, they, my sister was the one at location, and they were letting her know what they saw on camera. They being the police? Any of us. Yeah, I mean, I, I said in the beginning, I think that the police made this ruse up to them to keep them comfortable and tell them that we have her on video and just to get more information out of them, to find them making up stories that don't match to the timeline. So it, it could have been a ruse that the police told them and then they're just, you know, regurgitating that. But again, I remember doing the car, uh, the, the school, car, uh, the, the car school pool thing. Here in New York, it gets cold in the winter time. You know they're down in Florida, so it's a different ball game. But it's hot. If I dropped my kid off and he had to walk across a four lane highway, um, he would be like, "Hey, Dad, what what's up with this? You know what I mean? You're driving me to school, but you're going to drop me off here at some church that I have to walk down to the school." Uh, Stefan described her as sleeping in the car, so she's sleeping. What do you do? Poke her, wake her up, and say, "All right, get out." Just, just, just doesn't make sense. No. Well, I, I, I think the, the only way I've made sense of him saying that she was sleeping in the car was one that he wouldn't have to say what they were talking about. And two is that if there is any footage of her in the car and she's dead, that she, he could plausibly say that she was asleep or something like that. But Right. That was, as I said, that was his cover story. So, yeah. you know, uh -huh. yeah, you said it. You said it, Dad. Mm -hmm. um, let's let this. Way. Got it. OK. Jen, is there anything else that you'd like to uh, to add? Please, 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 if you have any information, contact me, contact law enforcement. Um, any any information helps. Um, Maddie, if you see this, please come home. Please be safe. I love you very much. If you have my Maddie, please just let her come home. We just want her home. So there was the first um, and the last that we heard of her. So um you know the mom is now being quiet because obviously lots of things have developed since then um uh, and since these interviews and we're not going to hear much more from them uh, but dr g so your takeaway from this second which interview which we watched in its entirety is really not any different than from the first right yeah not really she does much of the behaviors we see other than the extreme intense anxiety much of the behaviors were pretty similar the way that she talked about things were pretty similar the awkwardness the sort of odd way of saying things all of that was pretty much the same so i basically feel the same after watching that as i did when i watched the other interview i think they're pretty consistent yeah um ed anything from you no, it's like i said um I'm, i can't wait to get my hands on the autopsy report i'd like to read those uh criminal investigative reports uh, and any crime scene reports as to uh, how they recovered the body at the, at the, uh, in the field there, um, what, what uh, observations were made, uh, what injuries may have been noted on the body, um, the state of the, uh, of, of the body, its clothing and so forth. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm waiting for that information so I can get a, get a good, um, grasp of what, of what possibly transpired. Now, my guess was one or two scenarios in blunt force trauma or strangulation. Um, so, I, you know, because I'm not hearing anything about any blood or anything like that um, in the vehicle or anything like that. I know the vehicle was seized. I know the um, the warrant was done on the, on the apartment or the condo or whatever that is they live in there. Um, and so I'm just waiting to get on my hands on all of those uh, reports and information. Yeah, that's going to be a tale. That's going to tell quite a bit of the puzzle and, and, and how quickly they release that. It, it depends on the investigation and what they have. Um, and, also of concern, too, is um, from the autopsy is the time of death. Um, you know, not only, the, you know, the cause and manner of death, but the time of death. You know. and, and Go ahead. One, Go ahead. The, the one thing that, that stands out to me just in terms of body language and potential cause of death is that when the, I can't remember exactly what they were saying at the time, but that hand flexing to me, that's that speaks to the fact that he was really thinking about his hands when they were talking about her disappearing. So maybe that's just a coincidence, but 
if if it turns out it was strangulation or something like that, I'm not going to be surprised at all, unfortunately. Yeah, me neither. Me neither. And, and this is a question from the audience, um, and it wasn't in the chat tonight, but it, it's something that came in on dutyround.com. Um, how can these investigators determine a cause of death if he arguably was in the summer heat of 79 degrees, which was Friday? I watched the ticker on the bottom of the live news report when she was recovered uh, past 4.30 on Friday, um, 79 degrees is what it said at 4:30. If she was arguably murdered on the, as per the detect, uh, as per the sheriff on the night of uh, Sunday night of her party, that's a, a full five days out there. Um, how are they making a determination of time of death? And there's, I want you to try to address the. And Ed is qualified because he's a crime scene investigator, forensic expert. He's processed over 2,700 crime scenes uh, for the New York City Police Department. So this is, he's well qualified for this. Uh, so time of death, how do they determine that? And can they determine if this rumor that everyone's talking about is that she was pregnant? Will that come out as well yeah. in the autopsy? The autopsy will determine if she was pregnant. Yeah, yes, definitely. Um, the time of death, usually things like rigor mortis, Okay, when when that settled in, now rigor will come and go um, over a period of time. So um, also liver mortars, where the blood settles from gravity, um, the way the body is deposited. Um, also, time of death can be determined by um, what insects are present uh, at the body. Um, you know, trigger alert, folks. I'm sorry. Uh, you know, the insects and the and the indigenous wildlife. You know, they will smell um, that smell of death. And they'll come look for a food source. And the so what insects are present around in and on the body and around the body. Um, now, it, she, if she wasn't directly in the sun, which I don't believe she was. All right. I, I believe she was hidden by some trees, a patch of trees and, and so forth like that. Although I, I did see a, that released crime scene for photograph, which uh, shouldn't have been released, but it was an accident, allegedly. Um, uh they will look at the eyes. They'll look at the, the drying of the um, eyes. They'll look at uh, the state of decomposition, um, and they'll take body core temperatures. All right. Uh, again, the fact being that she was out uh, in the in, in the open environment uh, with limited clothing on, a hoodie. Um, now the mother said she was wearing shorts, but there's there's information that she was wearing blue jeans, um, right. a, pair, a pair of Crocs. Um, if she is wearing long pants and a hoodie. Uh, that, that kind of helps us with the skin, um, from kind of protecting it from certain, uh, insects and animals and so forth, uh, somewhat, but, um, the larger, um, mammals could, could, that won't affect them, um, at all. Uh, but, um, so you got to see the temperature swings, uh, between the night and the day in this particular location and the humidity, all of these things, uh, will come together and the, at they should be able to give you a ballpark range of time of death. Yeah. Um, and, and a lot of people wanted to know those questions because nothing is being released and, and people want to see that uh, the autopsy results to find out some of these details. And because the investigation comes first and justice for, you know, uh, for this, the victim for Maddie Soto, you know, Madeline deserves justice and for the police to um, give out information. And, and what happened with that sheriff is just horrific. I want to make it very clear that uh, any and all law enforcement professionals are disgusted by that, that mess up. And it was done in a senior citizen post that was made on the personal sheriff's web um, Instagram page. Uh, and it was mixed in with, I think, five or four photos. It was one crime scene photo, which depicted her body at that scene taken by somebody uh, at the scene. Um, there's no excuse for it, and he should be punished for it. Um, there's no doubt in my mind that the family deserves better. This this victim, this small victim, deserves better. So I'm disgusted by that. And when I heard that, it was just I put my head down and I thought of our victim, and and it was just despicable. So again, I, I call it as I see it, and and Ed, I know that you feel the same way. There is no no reason that that should have happened. I don't care what kind of slip up, but. I mean, Dr. G, I see you shaking your head. Ed, I know how you feel about it. Yeah, no, I mean, this, you know, the, there, there should be a series of checks and balances on these kind of public information uh, releases. You yeah. know, somebody should have uh, got a second pair of eyeballs on on what was going to be released to the public like that on social media. Right. 
And the last thing we want to do is have justice stopped or paused. You know, we don't want this to take away from the investigation because now that has to be investigated by somebody else, by the attorney general's office. They're looking into it and they're like, somebody's got a lot of explaining to do. Um, and you don't want to take the attention away from this case by having something like that happen. And, and it was just, you know, bad time and horrible, horrible um, to hear that. But be, be that as it may, um, what we're looking at is an exhaustive investigation of, you know, the criminal investigation, but also the forensics from the computers, the cell phones. And it's going to go to aunts, uncles, acquaintances, extended family. They talked about a bunch of people being at that family gathering at grandma's house. They're all grabbed up, interviewed, interrogated, talked to, whatever the case may be. And if they're willing to give their cell cellular devices up, let's look at the history. Was she reaching out and crying out to an aunt or an uncle or to somebody who she trusted within the family? Hey, I'm being molested. I'm being like, all of this is going to be part of the investigation and it takes time. So listen, Dr. G, I want to um, go to the chat if you don't mind. Um, yep. You know, I know we're at that hour mark and I was going to do this at, at 45 minutes, but we got a little bit, you know, sometimes when we do these talks, but anything else that you want to add to this, Dr. G, before we go to the questions in the chat? I, I'm sure people are going to, well, not really, because I'm sure people are going to have all sorts of questions, but I'm open to hearing whatever everybody's got to say. Um, you know, one thing I do want to say is that I know how hard it is to see this. I know how much we all want justice in this situation. And it's very possible that my read on it is wrong. And I'm open to that, but I would love to discuss it with you guys. So whatever questions you got, let me have it. Fair enough. And listen, guys, just be respectful with the questions. Hashtag Dr. G, hashtag duty Ron, hashtag Ed. And I'm going to highlight some of the super chats. Ed, I put you in charge of picking out the questions. So let me go and highlight some of these super chats. Thank you so much, Sheepdog, for becoming a YouTube member. Thank you, Trisha, for becoming a member. Quite a few. Uh, thank you, Sheepdog, for upgrading to the higher membership uh, in the course of your becoming a member. <laughs> I appreciate that. You're from Germany. It's always great to have our international audience. Wendy, thank you for the super sticker. Much appreciated. Miss Jax from Dr. G's side became a member as well. We appreciate cross-pollination. For those of you who are members or subscribers here, go over and subscribe to this man right here. Dr. G explains. He does a lot of different cases, everything that you want. And you could you know, message him and ask for a question, suggestion. I've heard him say it. I like if you have a case. Send it to me. I'll 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 do it. I'm doing this one because I got a ton of emails about it. <laughs> so. Doctor G, um, Sarah Jean wrote she changed her Facebook name to her dog's name. Is that not odd? <laughs> that's it. so. So I I would assume it's just so people couldn't find her. But yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. Miss mm -hmm. Jax, thank you for being a member. Uh, becoming a member, Laura. Thank you for becoming a new member. Dion says good night. Seems so final. This is probably while we were doing the uh, interview. There were no tears on either of their faces. Um, we we can't really, um, we can't disagree with you on that. It looks like in this Fox 35 interview, she did, that was the most emotion that I saw any of them exhibit and we couldn't really see because it was blurry. So thank you for that super chat. I want to finish these up. There's only a couple more. Uh, Fuzzy Docs, he says he is, he's making himself a victim maybe perhaps perhaps she's talking about Stefan. Stefan, oh yeah guys like him they are perpetual victims that's what they're going to tell everybody for any reason they can so sure i'm sure he is angela thank you for becoming a member from the dr g side and appreciate that sharon super sticker we uh love and appreciate all of the support lee uh, mckenna she says timestamp 1415 she said maddie's woke maddie woke at nine um nine AM? I'm um, not sure. 14, 15. It's nice to well, I'm going to go look at that. Thank you for that. Jeff over in Wyoming says, I think law enforcement is building a solid case. Hi, Ron. Hi, Ed. Hi, Dr. G. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks. Um, thank you for being a member. Do we know anything on the biological dad? Thank you, panel. Ed, did you hear anything? Dr. G? I haven't. I'm ungats, as we yeah. say in Italy. Ungats. It's been crickets on the biological father. Why is he not making a statement? Where is he? Is he in jail? Is he is he alive? Is I've, I've seen reports that he lives in Texas. 
Um, I don't know if that's valid, but uh, yeah, you would think, um, you know, the, the news would have hunted him down yeah. and got his take on it. Look who's here, our good friend, Commander Mike King from Profiling Evil. Thanks for fighting for those who cannot fight for themselves. Duty Ron and Ed, great job tonight. And Dr. G. Hey, Dr. G, if there's ever a guy to collaborate with on YouTube, he's a con consummate professional and a gentleman. Mike King. Mike always King. Great, always great to see Mike. Uh, Tina Williams, $20 super chat. She says, um, has there been any mention of biological father? Yeah. yeah we just <laughs> did that. We just did it. Yes. Um, Taylor sends in a $10 super sticker. Thank you. And Darlene Wolf, uh, our EMT and paramedic from Long Island. Long Island. Darlene, thank you. Ed, hold on a second. I got something for you, Ed. Hold on. Stop breathing down my neck. Stop breathing down my neck, Ed. Uh, what do you got? Our oh, friend just up. subscribed from Ireland. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Dr. James uh, MD, uh, gifted five memberships. That's our good doctor uh, checking in. Vet girl, RW Bus. She's a member for 26 months. She said, thank you. Much respect as always. Appreciate that. Cheryl and Chofner. I'm sorry. My bad. Cheryl and <laughs> I love you. That was the last one. So go ahead. Put that put that up. Let's get to yeah, the it was question. a question for Dr. G. <laughs> Does mental illness or depression change one's body language? Well, they certainly can. Mental illness that obviously there's a, a broad types of there, there are many types of mental illness so part of what we try to do when we see somebody with uh, when we're going to analyze body language is to get some baseline of their behavior so if somebody's got adhd for example they're going to be a little jumpier they're going to be a little wigglier and move around more if somebody has depression then maybe they're going to react less there are different types of mental illness that can affect body language but the one thing you got to remember is that everything the body does means something. So it's all about interpreting what is what is it that I'm observing. So do those things matter? Yes, but they don't change things so drastically that there's all different rules. You just got to figure out what matters and filter out what doesn't. So yeah, do those things matter? Yes, but they won't make it so you can't read body language. So Okay, here's all another right. question for you. Dr. Dr. G, true or not, when you are remembering an event or a moment, you tend to look up, and to the right. If you're creating a story, you look up and to the left. Is that true or not true? There's no research to support that. It may be true, but no research is out there that says that that's in fact true. So I don't ascribe to that because to the best of my knowledge, there is, uh, it, it is not consistent, I don't believe. But uh, I'm not going to say it's not true. I don't personally believe it, but it's possible. It's just not something okay. I do. Hashtag Ed, hashtag Duty Ron, hashtag Dr. G. We're almost at that 15-minute mark for the questions. I want to say also thank you to the audience from Dr. G's um, memberships and subscribers and, and folks over on his channel. They're viewing this uh, thanks to StreamYard, and StreamYard enables creators to stream their appearances when they collaborate with other creators. And I think it's a wonderful thing. We should use it more often. Some people turn it off, and I'm like, no. Uh, th this is a great way to cross pollinate with subscribers. And, um, you know, anytime that Dr. G asked Ed and I to come on, we hope he enables that for us so we can do that as well. I think it'll be a great thing. Um, how often do you go live? Do you do it on a regular basis, Doc? I, I, I used to do it like every month or every three weeks or so. I've been doing a lot of forensic cases the past couple of months that have just been kicking my ass. So I've just haven't had the time, but I'm getting ready to get back in that rhythm. So once or twice a month, hopefully. So New Jersey Robin says, Dr. G, can you please give your opinion on how it seemed mom stopped shaking when she heard that parrot noise? That's an interesting point. I hadn't noticed the correlation with that, but that seemed to distract her. For her, that was a genuine moment of amusement. And that goes back to what confuses people because she smiled. She kind of looked to the side, sort of a faux sort of embarrassment, just tried to play along with it. So I think that that probably calmed her nerves because it distracted her because we can't have multiple thoughts at the same time. So if whatever was coursing through her veins that was making her so anxious before, that moment might have distracted her and actually grounded her in a sense. We all saw it as inappropriate because we're like, why are you smiling in the middle of this? But for her, somehow that may have distracted her in a way that it was helpful to, to ground her in a sense. Yeah, that was a good question. Um, I was also wondering about it. I was wondering what what it was. Uh, some people said it was a reminder to feed the parrot or some kind of recorded message. Um, but 
I couldn't really make out exactly what she was saying, but it was uh, an interesting part of that interview. Um, anything else, Ed? Well, this, um, Dr. G um, is fantastic. That's right. Do you still practice clinical psychology with patients? I do. I did it for nine hours today before I did this. So, <laughs> yeah. So I, I do forensic work. I've done about 2,000 forensic evaluations. I also see thousands of, of people on the clinical side. I do a little bit of everything. So, yes, I still do that. As a matter of All fact, right. when, I, when I reached out to Dr. G today just to do, to, to do a quick talk, he said, hey, I'm seeing patients until about 11.15. I know that was probably just one. Yeah. Uh, and he was like, hey, could you, can you call me at 11.15? And I was like, yeah, sure. So, yeah, he, he's still working. Yeah, um, I have the video queued up of her with the parrot. Does anybody want to take a look at that before we answer this last question? By a show of hands in the chat, if you want to see Jennifer Soto and the reaction that we just discussed with Dr. G, Put a one in the chat and we'll do it. Put a two if you'd rather just hear us chit chat away with you guys. I see a couple of number ones. I see a couple of number ones. No number twos. Nobody has said no. We don't want to see it. All right. There we go. Got to go with what they want. Right, Doc? Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> okay. So to answer this question before you move on, okay, how long does a criminal autopsy take? It depends on the um, medical examiner's office or the coroner's office and how busy they are and how many... Um, forensic pathologists they have, whether they can do it internally or do they have to farm it out to a university or to a hospital to conduct the autopsy. But one tech, normally in New York City, um, a body will come in from the street and pretty much um, will be autopsied within the, the next two days. Yeah. A lot now, of times when I was on the scene of a death investigation or a homicide, I would have to go the next morning into the medical examiner's office. So sometimes we would get it that next morning within 12 yeah. hours. So absolutely, go ahead. And, absolutely. Sorry. But oh, don't forget, it, it's not complete until the toxicology and all the, the mic work and the lab work is done. Okay. So your initial in, in, initial examination of the body, the dissection, and all looking at the organs and looking at all the internal aspects of this, you know, that will be done. Uh, I, either the next day or the day after here's one more ed we're going to slip this one in because open gate is just wanting to know simple question do you think she's hiding something ed well i remember now you gotta you have to put this in in perspective of the time at this point in time they have not been notified that the police are on to the fact that um she was dead already okay uh and they have videotape of him tossing out the uh backpack in her laptop in the dumpster at 7.30, and that they have video of her appearing to be dead in his car uh, mm -hmm. at around 8-ish eight, uh, in, in the morning there. Uh, right. So um, it's hard to say. Dr. G's, one of his mods, says, hey, Dr. G, how's your precious wife, kids, and those doggies? Everybody's great. And I have two French bulldogs. They're wonderful. Everybody's everybody's doing great. <laughs> oh, you, you, you have French bulldogs? I do. They, I love them. They took the number one spot away from my dog in America, right? I have a little lab, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's, that's Joy Z Jen. Joy Z Jen. All right. Um, let's, here we go. Here it comes. Um, wanted to walk the rest of the way. I want to see exactly. I I want to hear exactly what those words the parrot was saying were, because I, I, I can make out something. Yeah, there had there has been cases where um, a parent um, started speaking um, words heard during a homicide, like I'm going to no, kill you, or whatever. Yeah, that's interesting. Well, uh -huh. but what what we're seeing as far as her body language in that moment goes, I mean, it's so. As I said, it's so it's so awkward and it's so it, it was interesting that she closed her eyes until it was done because it was almost like it would be too intense to look at the person because it's a little bit embarrassing, maybe. And so maybe that speaks to some of her social skills that she when she feels intense, like she shuts down a little bit. I mean, it's it's she's just so, and it looks like a genuine smile, too. That's what gets me is like that looks like a genuine look of amusement, like the way that her eyes are positioned in her mouth. It looks like genuine amusement. I want to play it one more time. Dropped her off close to the school. 
Um, she wanted to walk the rest of the way. Jenny food. Oh. <laughs> She goes back to the, yeah. Okay. All right. So any other questions? Uh, I think we answered them all an hour and 15 minutes. We're going to have to give Doc a little overtime pay here. Um, but I think that this was any an informative hour and, and 15 live stream. We went over the body language of um, the victim's mother here, uh, Jennifer Soto. And, um, you know, listen, just because you didn't hear the things that you wanted to hear from the great doctor doesn't mean that she does not have any hand in this thing. He is basing it off of his professional expertise and his opinion of what he sees for face value here. And, and as Ed just said, it was this was early on in the game. They thought that the show and the lights camera action was still rolling. They had no idea that the jig was up. And um, that's the, that's the, um, the that's the reason why this is important. But it's not. This is not the end all answer to everything. You know, this is just early in the investigation. Um, people are saying, I'm watching the chat, and your side's going crazy, Doctor G, because your people are really like this is a treat because they're up till nine thirty at night on the East Coast, and Doctor G's hanging out. But yeah, Ed, any final thoughts before we close up? I'll go to you first, Ed, and then we'll go to the great doc. Well, I want to thank the doctor for coming and sharing his expertise with us. I always enjoy the other forensic disciplines and, and listening to uh, subject matter experts in their fields. And I, I got my forensic geek on again two days in a row now. Um, so, uh, you know, a happy camper here. But uh, I want to thank you all, folks. Um, you know, I know you, uh, you know, sharing your valuable time with us and, you um, and uh, thank you for your support. Uh, please spread the word about us and Dr. G and um, and hope to see you again soon. And remember what I always say, folks, uh, stay safe, stay prepared and watch your six. Thank you, Ed. Uh, and Doc, I wanted to go to you for some final thoughts and, you know, maybe something that you could give to the folks on both sides here that are watching, you know, what to look out for in the future. Yeah. Well, I, first of all, I really do appreciate being on here. I always, I love doing things like this. I think it's a lot of fun. I enjoy sharing my own perspective on this. Even if everybody doesn't share it, I get it. This is a, a really challenging and intense case, but what we're all going to figure out over time is hopefully law enforcement will be able to share more that things will start to get pieced together. Who knows? There may be trials coming up. It, it, it would be a long way off, but I really appreciate everybody being open-minded, listening to what I have to say about this. My perspective is very different, or at least my approach was going to be very different than law enforcement, the uh, different types of forensics that are going to be looking at all of this. But the, the one thing that I also think about is that if Jennifer Soto was not involved in this in any way, and she just is a victim and someone who has been manipulated by all of this, how hard this must truly be for her to be going through. Um, th does that mean that she doesn't have some culpability somewhere along the lines all of that will be sorted out but the, the reality is, is this is somebody who lost her child if she was involved with it that's a whole different thing but i i do hope we all keep that in mind as as this moves forward and hopefully we'll all get a lot more information that lets us make even more informed decisions about it as as time goes on yeah that makes a lot of sense doc you know i i, I always say to the audience when we're ending these things is don't go after these people don't go after the family don't go after the mom because you got to leave that up to the law enforcement you need the detectives who are investigating the case the district attorney who's going to ultimately charge it they are the ones who have to get the facts and get the evidence not us where it's not our job to extract it from them uh i want to also say quickly to friends i had a poll up do you think jennifer soto will be charged in the future and i started this poll during the day 3595 people voted I want you to give you guys all a chance to come and vote. You'd have to be on this side to vote, uh, or maybe you can. I don't know. But the choices were yes, no, and undecided. 
And as it stands right now, 3,600 votes. Uh, some people are now jumping in like, oh, oh, shit, let me get in. Let me get some votes in. Uh, so 3,610. Uh, 76% said yes, that she will be charged. 5% said no. And out of the 3,615 votes, 19% are undecided. So it just gives us a good look at what our listening audience, um, and, and I've had this poll up all day, Doc, um, but a lot of people forget it's there. It's pinned at the top of the chat. Um, 76% say yes, 5% say no, and 19%. So we're holding strong with those figures. I want to, again, thank everyone for participating. If you're not yet subscribed here to Crime Time with Duty Ron and Ed Wallace, please consider subscribing. Giving this video a thumbs up helps with the algorithm. Share it onto your social media platform. And also, if you are part of my community, I highly recommend this gentleman right here. Go and subscribe to him. He is nothing but a good man. He's, he's telling it to you as it is and not, there's no fluff. There's no extra fluff in what he does. He gets down to business. He gives it to you straightforward without any uh, nonsense. Again, this is about our victim right here, Madeline Soto. I want to just send strength, prayers, and positive vibes to the entire community, all of the investigators, all of the people who were close to her, that loved her. Um, strength, prayers, and positive vibes on behalf of Crime Time with Duty Ron, Ed Wallace, and Dr. G Explains. That's what this is all about, ladies and gentlemen. So we're going to end it on that. Thank you, Dr. G. Ed, thank you for being here as always. We'll see you guys on the next one. Dr. G, if you could just don't mind, hang out just for a second. I got a few things I want to tell you. Yep. Good night, folks.